Today on Gamers Couch. Old Orleans. Welcome everybody. Of course the game is just called Orleans, but that's just an inside joke due to me not well, being able to read it's not, without glasses. It's not that inside if you saw the last episode. Madame, right. Madame New Orleans was... Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly modern, you know, that's why. Or very much behind the times. Yeah, depending. So, welcome to the Gamers Couch. Happy Sunday to you. Today we're talking about the last of the nominees for Spiel des Jahres 2015. Forever. Forever. Our Forever, the last time we talk about nominees and this is the last I nominee. Said a, I said a year. Forever. He's screwing up my intro. No, no. So, please. welcome to the couch. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for all the new subscribers uh, to hitting that lovely button for the channel and see what the crazy videos we do on Sundays. Off one day <laughs> I'm gonna have Stop like, loading button. One day I'm gonna have like the dislike button. a long stick with the duct tape and whenever I wanna talk <laughs> I just put it in front of your face. Anyways, uh Welcome, like I said, again. He wants to produce bloopers, I think. No. So, uh, we're, of course, on the couch as every Sunday we talk about a board game. And he starts off with explaining the rules and gameplay to you. Afterwards, we talk about what we liked and maybe not liked about the game. And then we um, head on to funny stories and experiences that we had while playing the game. Which kind of wraps up. A long video, I guess. Do you want to say anything before no, I no, head to... Okay, so let's get started. And just saying, uh, maybe we produce a lot of bloopers today because I just feel like it today. So it might be that there are bloopers at the end. We'll see. So, please, my dear husband... Oh, by the way, ha! Huh, this is... You screwed up my intro. Now I, now I know what I forgot. Um, to all the new subscribers, you might not know who we are. I'm Sarah, the artist behind Pinselgeschichten, and this creature here, which always talks when I want to talk, is my lovely husband, Daniel. So please, sweet love, now go into explaining rules and gameplay to our lovely viewers. Go. You're allowed to talk. Are you sure? Yes. You were talking the entire time. I did not say anything. It was a pointer that I gave you last, which means do your job, do the talking. And I'm That's sipping pointer. coffee and being silent. <sighs> so as the title of the show says, welcome to the history board game. Welcome to medieval France, Orléans, where we all will vie for control, power, money, influence, or victory points, however you want to call it, to win the game, the race, with our other competitors in, well, become, becoming the most powerful merchant, trader, whatever, in medieval Orléans. Now, this game is quite complex the first time you look at it. It's, uh, um, it employs, mid on uh, major, um, let me start again. It employs mostly two different mechanics. One is a back building mechanic in terms of you will try to get more resources that you put into a bag and draw those uh, out of the bag uh, to do stuff with them and to fulfill actions. Ultimately, however, it is more of a worker placement game where those resources you draw out you will place on the board to Activate actions and these actions give you, you've guessed it, more stuff, more resources to do more actions and ultimately to win you victory points by obtaining goods or doing other interesting stuff. So this is not really a good game to talk about the full flow of the game. Uh, you will do a lot of turns where everybody's kind of doing the same thing at the same time, like planning and or uh, then you resolve those actions. I would just want to go briefly over a couple of those and uh, hope that's enough to give you an impression on how this is played. First of all, each of you starting the game will have this little board in front of them. And uh, 
at least our version comes with an English and a German version. So I'm reading the German thing while you keep on reading the English thing, right? Um, so as I said, each player has one of those. This is actually the tableau that allows you to perform actions. You see a lot of little colorful dudes around here. And those are your resources. You will try to get more people to work for you. Remember medieval? Well, actually, it's not that different today. So you, you have a lot of folks working for you and you will spend folks that you drew from the back at the beginning of the turn by distributing them on those different actions. Uh, once you have someone on an action, or the action is filled up completely, let's say you have a farmer, a shipfarer, whatever guy, and a trader on these three, you can perform the castle action. You don't have to, but maybe you want to do it this turn, maybe you want to do it next turn. Timing is actually important in this game, specifically because you're playing for the same resources with all the other players and it could very much happen that the other players will pick up stuff that you want to have and if it's gone it's gone and you might be prevented from doing other stuff so uh, the basic mechanic is at the beginning of the, of your turn you draw well, folks from this bag You'll start out with four uh, at the beginning of the game. These go down here into this market area where you then, in the planning phase, will distribute them around these stations. You want to fill up a station with as many dudes as you can, but as I said, you don't have to take an action, so you can start filling up an action, or you can just leave the guys down here in the market. However, note that there's only space for eight dudes down here, so if you have a lot of guys in the bag already, maybe you want to start putting them out on those stations here. The caveat, however, is once you have someone on one of these stations, it's really difficult to get them back into the market and then redistribute them. So you can't store them up here and redistribute them at will. There's a way to get them back, but there's more involved, actually. So on your turn, you put the guys that you drew from the bag, assign them to those stations, and when every player is done with that, beginning with the start player, you will start resolving actions, and you will do one action at a time. So, let's assume I was starting, I could now res uh, resolve my castle action, and then it would be Sarah's turn, and Sarah does whatever action she wants. Now, if I have another action ready, I can do that, or I can just say, well, I pass, and then Play continues with whoever has not passed yet. After after passing, pretty much the same happens again. You will resolve the end of the turn or the end of the round, better said, um, and a new event will come in. I'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, and that entire cycle begins again. So most of the game is draw guys from a bag, put them on here, and then do stuff with them. Now, doing stuff with them, uh, You'll notice, apart from this little board that is in front of you, the game actually has two additional boards. One is this with uh, well, lots of common stuff that you can do, like building a city wall or having defeating the plague. So there's good stuff. This is actually something where all the players together can try to work uh, and uh, maybe reap some rewards. Obviously, someone will get more than others. And this is... No, the this is the other board which I would say is probably the main board of the game. Uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of little tracks where you will move tokens forward on. There's a longer track down here and a map. Now to make things a little bit more simple, let me break this down into two sides. You can already see this game has a lot of different components or different parts that you're going to be working with. Um, probably on your first game it's not that important to know everything about everything on this on this board or, or every action that you can do. But actually as a piece of advice, try to figure out one or two things, specialize in them and go with that and see how that turns out for you. So each, uh, each action on this little board corresponds pretty much with something on this board, either on this side or on the other side. Um, so for example, if you uh, 
trigger. No, it's all right. Uh, if you if you trigger the uh, action for the farmhouse, you would get first of all a new farmer, which are these little guys that goes into your bag, and your play marker. You have a couple of those. One of on each of those fields will move forward. While moving forward on all of these tracks, usually something good happens. Um, actually, always something good happens. Uh, the worst that can happen is that nothing happens. Um, so, for instance, with the farmer, you move forward and you will gather goods like wheat, cheese, wine. I don't know, it's a string, I think, and brocard. Um, these goods. You guessed it, it's a Euro game, will be worth victory points at the end of the game. So you want to have a lot of goods at the end of the game to be uh, leading the entire thing. That farmer you're getting out of here can then be used in whenever you draw him from the bag to activate more stuff. Same here with the craftsman, um, then you have the trader, the seafarer, uh, a knight, and down here this is an uh, academic guy. I actually professor, I, let's call him I, professor. I, oh, I, if I actually hold up the board, you can see him. <laughs> so uh, down here, he's, he's the knight. Here's the uh, the professor or the the scholar, maybe I, I guess. Um, the special traits you're getting here are the craftsman gives you technology, which are us these little gear tiles uh, which are really handy remember when I said you can put guys on each of these fields with technology you can replace one per action through a technology tile and then you don't have to spend as many guys on that action anymore pretty cool um, there's a the trader the trader will give you a building buildings are these guys here which just give you additional actions and uh, i there are far too many to go through all of them but they're pretty good they're pretty much either similar actions to you, what you already have but cheaper or actions that uh, allow you to do well more interesting stuff some of them are even passive so you buy a building and you don't actually have to spend one of your resources to activate it but it transforms your let's say seafarers into a wild card character that can now be placed for every field instead of just the blue ones speaking of seafarers these guys give you coins so there's another resource type apart from the goods up here that is Money. Money is also worth victory points at the end of the game. Also a valid path to victory. Um, then there's knights, and these are a little bit more involved with your bag building. Apart from giving you the knight token, uh, you will also increase the amount of tokens you are allowed to draw each turn. Um, remember, I said there's only eight spots where you can put your guys down there, so you can that is pretty much the maximum you can draw. And if you see down here, the maximum is actually eight uh, to fill that up. Um, if I would advance this twice from four to six, that would mean at the end of the turn, I get to get draw, draw six guys out of that black bag, put it into my marketplace and then distribute them. So this is essentially giving me more opportunities to do more stuff in my turn. And last but not least, the scholar has these little books on here. These books actually correspond to the track that's down here. It's actually on both sides. And uh, you will move your marker forward as many spaces as this says. So on the first time you move two forward, then three, and then four, and so on and so on. Um, this track in itself gives a couple of rewards, like you see the money down here that you'll get, but these stars are actually the important thing, uh, which come into play again at the end of the game and act as a multiplier to increase scores from certain points. Breathe, baby, breathe, and then tell us all about the other part of the board. But wait, there's more. So there's also this map with Orléans up here and some other places and what you don't see uh, there are little well you see them but they're little box icons down here and these are icons that will get little uh, farm chits or little good chits that will lay on these uh, on these roads and seaways 
And roads and seaways is already a good uh, segue to what can you do on this. So you'll start with your dude in Orléans and can also use two different actions to move around the board. There's the ship and the wagon down here and whenever you use that you can move your guy across this board either while well, you guessed it over water or over land. Uh, while doing so you're allowed to pick up one good that is on the way which is pretty handy. So that is another way to get well, different goods uh, throughout of, of the game. Uh, there's a third action you can do here and uh, that is whenever your guy is in a city and uh, nobody else has built a little house in there you can build a, a canton, a, a little house, which also will be worth victory points at the end of the game. Um, and that is pretty much the broad gist of the, of the game. There's some other stuff in here as well. I said uh, events, there's these little uh, tiles uh, that you'll turn over. There's 18 of those, so now you know how many rounds this game is played. You will flip each of these over. Uh, each event is present three times, so you six events three times. Um, and these can be good or can be, well, annoying. It's, I wouldn't call them straight up bad. Yes, you have to pay sometimes some, some goods or get rid of uh, stuff, but since every player has to do that, it's not too bad. Um, the only thing when it's really bad is if you cannot pay because then you have to pay in other goods and that can be pricey in regards to victory points. So let's say there's... Um, I gave you one of each. Um, there's, where is it? Uh, let's say there's the, uh, the harvest or ante as we like to call it. Um, that says you have to give up either one wheat, one cheese, or one wine, and if you cannot do that, you have to give up five coins. Now, to know that, wheat is worth one point, cheese is worth two points, and wine is worth three victory points at the end of the game, and five coins would be worth five points at the end of the game. So you want to get rid of the wheat. Now, assume you have neither of those three and not a coin, then it's going going to get really expensive because then you have to pay, pay the iron price kind of and uh, pay something that is a stand-in for that good. Uh, the other two goods are worth four and five victory points um, and as, I, as you can see this is getting quite expensive then. Um, and so these are there are good good uh, things that give you money. As I said, some, some take money from you. Some, with some of them, the the plague you have to actually draw a, a resource from your bag and get rid of it, which uh, is one of the very. I think that's the only way to get rid of a resource mm -hmm. permanently, uh, with the exception of the of this, which I haven't talked about yet. So, uh Actually, let's go back to this board and quickly go over this. Um, and let me take the English side so that I don't throw only German words at you, which is weird. I mean, it's uh, from Rainer Stockhausen, which uh, seems sounds pretty German. Uh, so uh, even though this been uh, happening in France, I guess there's a lot of German in here and English, not so much French. Um, so, farmhouse, I already told you, activate that, you get a farmer. Village, you get to choose if you want to have a seafarer, a craftsman, or a trader. Or the university, which gives you a scribe. Up here, we have the castle action, which gives you a knight and in, well, uh, increases the amount of resources you draw. Uh, then you have the monastery, which gives you a monk. He goes in the top left corner of the game. Monks are not good for anything specific. They're good at everything because they're the wild card in this game. So you can place a monk for every other profession resource, uh, but the other way around that does not work. So you cannot place anyone. You can replace someone with a monk, but a monk is irreplaceable only by a monk. Um, 
Then you have these two in the middle, the scriptorum, which gives you um, or lets you advance on that little track at the bottom of the board to get higher score multipliers. Uh, the town hall, which I'll talk immediately about because that is this board here. Uh, and the three actions I, I think I mentioned, mm -hmm. the ship, the wagon and the guild hall to move across the, the map and build something on the map. Now, if you put guys on the town hall, this has actually two spaces and that is the only action so I think on this, yeah, it's the only action where you can place up to two guys but you don't have to, it's enough to just play one resource dude on, on this one. What happens then is you can send him to the town hall to do good deeds and unfortunately he won't be coming back from there. Uh, so he is permanently lost to your cause and doing good things. Uh, the way this works is if you send someone to a town hall you can place him on the corresponding colorful field and this is actually the only place where you cannot substitute someone with a monk. Um, however there are specific monk fields in here that where only a monk can go. So uh, the way this works is let's say you really are not that fond of the scribe you picked up so you sent him to defeat the plague. Uh, what happens then is you take the scribe and place him on the... Where is the scribe? Oh, I forgot to put him out. Someone <gasps> forgot the scribe. Bad preparation! Okay, let me then... let's Imagine go. it's gray. Imagine gray. Yeah. Uh, let's go colorful. Let's take this little knight. So let's say okay. you sent on the knight. Uh, you would put him on this space, then this space is permanently occupied, no other player can fill that up with a resource, and for each guy you put on this, you get three coins. So if you actually would play two at the same time, you would get six coins, um, or nine if you for some reason manage to fill up the entire thing. Now there's also these fields here on this board as well as on the other board. If you manage to fill up an entire set here, you get one of these uh, uh, eh, cool little civilian or citizen tokens. Citizen tokens are victory worth victory points at the end of the game. Um, there are precious few of those citizens, as you can see, one per uh, per good deed that you can do in the town hall. Um, and let me get back to the big map. Five on the big map, if I remember Sorry, correctly, so I... and one is depending on who there's no, I think... the ma most houses, right? I think there's more. We will find out in short. So on, on this thing, uh, it's probably not that easy to see, but there's a guy here, there's a guy here. Um, yep. So if you fill that out to maximum, the first player to get to this point gets the citizen. The first player to get to this point gets a citizen. There's a lot, of, a couple on this lower track down here, and you get whoever crosses them or lands on them first gets to pick them up. And last but not least, he who has the most buildings on the map will get the citizen. And yeah, that's it. Uh, apart from that, there's just uh, some. Well, little quirky rules um, that are not really super necessary for you to know uh, unless you are immediately playing this game like uh, the player who's ahead on this track will get a coin the player who if he's alone ahead or in front of everybody else if you have a player who is uh, alone behind everybody else he has to pay a coin to, to the bank um, yeah um, every resource is limited in this game so if uh, I said timing is important. If someone picked up all, or if all the knights have been picked up by all the players, uh, except by you, you cannot trigger that action anymore because well, the knights are gone out of town. However, if some other player would lose, for example, a knight to the plague, uh, that action becomes available anymore and you can just go for that one. Similarly, if you max out one of the tracks, that's it. You maxed out the track, so you cannot get more knights even you're already at the eight, draw eight thing. Um, and probably you should th rethink your, your strategy at that point if you want to go that badly with all the knights. Um, and that is pretty much it. A uh, little caveat here. Um, you've seen, let me show you 
these resource guys. These are actually not the one in the game. The ones in the game are uh, little chits, uh, pretty much like this money chit here. Yeah, more like the one size wise. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty small, so more like yeah. this. Uh, however, there's uh, there was an upgrade package uh, available that comes with these little wooden meeples. They have stickers on both sides that actually even look differently, uh, which is really nice. Uh, same with the tech tokens. Uh, this is a, actually wooden block of technology and uh, not the chit of technology. Um, what I already have to say about these, which is really difficult to tell or to uh, experience unless you hold them in your hand, they're almost like plastic. I, it must be yeah. it must be the uh, the uh, um, laminated part or whatever. Yeah, there's some paint on on this that makes it really stiff, sturdy. It's uh, it, it is cardboard, but it is almost like like plastic, which uh, makes it nice if you have them in the bag and go the. Um, although the wooden meeples aren't bad either with the. So that's. That's it's the game. That's all in all. I think I got everything covered. Um, yeah. Well, with the with the expansion or the upgrade pack, there also came uh, parts for the fifth player because this one is only two to four usually. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. That's actually why we bought the upgrade and uh, second because of the meeples. Yeah. And uh, then there also comes a nice notepad where you can tally up your points, which you you otherwise have to do on a blank piece of paper <gasps> in your or mind in your head uh, yeah. so since since we're as i frequently say pretty unprofessional this game was made by Rainer stockhausen um it is actually two to four as sarah said um up to 90 minutes which is a pretty good call i think we mm -hmm. used to, we needed just a tidbit more than 90 minutes on the very first game with four players yeah so um with rules and all, all yeah. that jazz. So uh, that was yeah. good. And, it's, and it says 12 and up. Now, I I could totally understand if you'd say, um, wow, you that sounds really involved and complicated. Um, the game is actually moving fairly quickly. Uh, the good thing about this is, since every player has his little board in front of them, um, Every every player will look at the board and do the playing on what can I do with my action here and there, um, and at least in the first couple of games, probably not look at what all the other players are doing, so you're not really consciously screwing them over by trying to get rid of stuff or take things out of the game that they desperately try to get or block them with houses or something like that. Uh, but it, that is actually the extent to uh, how interactive this game is between players. So, um, as I said, this is a Euro game. You will be doing lots of point salad things um, and end up with lots of chits and little wooden meeples uh, trying to win over Orléans. And he who has the most victory points wins the game in 18 turns. Just like in medieval France. <laughs> Nicely said. So you took away a big point that I had on my like list. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, no problem. I didn't... So uh, for all the new subscribers and viewers, for, for that matter, uh, we don't talk about what we like about a game or not. Never. In, in uh, detail before we shoot Ever. the gamer's couch for it. Oh, okay. So he does it again. No. Today he, is, he You're really a rebel today. You're talking <laughs> over me all the time. So um, uh, it's so he couldn't have known that this was pretty much one of my like points. So let's hop into the like and dislike section so that we can have that out of the way. Um, and for those new to the channel, it's always Sarah who starts. Yeah, because he always talks so much and then he wants to sip coffee. Because I just don't get to say anything because Sarah is always talking over me the entire time. Wait for the outro and then tell me if he's right or I'm right. <laughs> so, here we go. Um, it's actually one big thing that I liked a lot about the game. Uh, uh, coming back to what you just said. Yes, it's a very heavy Euro game and it kind of feels overwhelming when you get explained the rules, but it's really not. It's uh, 
one turn after the other, one action after the other. It's uh, not too overwhelming in the turns that you that you play because you're very very limited by the resources that you you might uh, grab from your bag. So although you have in total maybe 15 options that you could play in a turn you have only four dudes of a certain color and that limits you to like two actions that you could actually do. So it's way more um, simple and um, I want to I wanna say streamlined in the actual turn because you just don't have the resources to do all the um, actions or even think about them. So I really, really like that, that um, though it's very involved and very complex it's on the other hand very simple because like i said your re your, your uh resources limit you uh, also what i really really liked uh was so, so to just just to talk over you no no, no so, you, so you, you i stopped talking for a second I, I would i would agree uh, with that you kind of you're exploring the possibilities why the game is going on uh, yeah the, fir the first time we played this i was just the rules lawyer at the sides of the game with the four others uh playing this and uh um, except for looking up what these uh building rules were in uh, particular there's not a lot of going back and forth and rule reading. The, no. You have your set phase of first do the event, then everybody grabs guys from the back, then everybody places in, in well, synchronous uh, yeah. at the same time, uh, and then you go around, do the actions, ultimately you, uh, you resolve. resolve the event. And, and the then you start again. So it's, yeah. it's really very, very simple, and it's the same... Uh, the same uh, process through the turn in all 18 turns. So it's it's not really that more complicated the more the game uh, goes along. So all, all was good. Um, it, I, I found it was very simple to teach. Uh, well, he taught us, uh, but I, it was not like a, a, a thousands of questions or can you explain that again? Can you explain that again? Or am I right? Is that that? That didn't no, happen so at the table. So I, I felt... I've, yeah, right, right, felt that. Um, but one thing that I have, uh, or, or that's one of my, well, uh, most important things when it comes to games and unpacking them, playing them for the first time, is the uh, quality of the components, the manual, and uh, the artwork. So I can't speak about the manual because uh, Daniel read them, so you got to talk about that. But I was really very very happy about the components especially the artwork um, and though there are lots and lots of tiny knickknacks that you gotta place on the board um, there's nothing in there that is flimsy that was maybe not done well or where said well this is totally useless you could actually this is a component you don't need that it's just it's ridiculous to have it in there so didn't have that impression. I really, really liked the artwork, by the way. And I liked uh, the way that the game was made. Like, it, it really felt in the theme of medieval France. The, just by having the, um, the figurines being certain types of people, which were really in medieval France, or the resources being like uh, the things that are very common in France, like cheese and wine, for example, and very good cloth. So uh, I was very happy about just it being, well, authentic, I think. And uh, one thing that I was not too happy about, but that was uh, resolved with the upgrade, was the dudes that you draw from the bag in form of these tiny chip thingies and I think you're playing with it again like now uh, the, the one so for people with bigger fingers it was really yeah. difficult yeah there it was really difficult to grab one of these and you you got maybe that stack that big at the end of the game 
out of this large bag and you kind yeah, of like puddle around like where there? <laughs> and you grab always two and you can't really uh, tell them apart it takes just a lot of time and <laughs> one of our friends just uh, since I have the smallest fingers so you gotta draw for me now <laughs> I'm trying to draw dudes and I'm always picking four instead of one so I wasn't too happy about that but with the wooden meeples coming with the upgrade I really think uh, this is just resolved um, since we are very often a group of five uh, it was just logical for us to have the upgrade have the fifth player being added to the game and the wooden meeples uh, come with the package so I really really like that it's way more simple easy whatever to uh, grab the right amount of uh, resources from your bag without taking hours of trying to fuddle in the back where it is and not get some other stuff <laughs> there. And, so and I the, really like that. And the, the, the publisher here in Germany even... So we... I just picked up the, the big upgrade pack, which is kind of these little wooden meeples and the tech tokens, the uh, additional, additional stuff to play with five folks, uh, which we haven't done yet so far, but maybe this weekend we'll, we'll maybe let you know, probably. If you're really interested, leave a comment in the comment sections below, and then uh, Sarah will send a handwritten note to YouTube that they will respond <laughs> to you. Um, so the uh, and uh, there's there was more. Yeah, there's uh, like a couple of, like three extra uh, buildings, then this postcard with some uh, extra stuff. Uh, as you said, the little sh sheet to. Yeah, a little tally, notepad just to tally up things. Tally scores and, and stuff, which is nice. Yeah. Um, One thing that I was really impressed with was uh, the way that this game played with four people and with two. So usually, or not usually, but quite often the two-player version of a game that is actually designed for more than two players is kind of like, um, well, a version that is okay to play but not that great uh, with this one this it, it, it doesn't make a difference at least not to me yes. um it was a bit more wild and crowded on the board with four players but that's just due to two additional players but um the the hunt for um resources for goods for houses for money was not less with two player at least not if you play against this one here uh, uh, there's a he, he was a very very fine opponent that really uh went for for um especially on on the board with the cities where you get the goods and uh, uh put down your houses um, playing with him, it doesn't mean that he goes the opposite direction than I go. No, 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 no. He goes where the good uh, goods are. Uh, and of course I do the same in, thing. In game war stories territory. No, so I really liked that this war on the board also happens with two players, not only and with four, because you just take away resources, you just uh, have less of them, depending on how many players. So I really find that just as balanced as the four-player game. And I was quite amazed with that. It's, they did a good a, job. It's a really, really good system behind yeah. behind the game that yeah. uh, apparently scales uh, very nicely. Nicely, yeah. I, I mean, the um, obviously, if you play with more than just two players, um, it can happen uh, if people decide to go after the same thing. Obviously, that is exhausted quicker than with uh, less players. Uh, yes, you have more resources available if, with a higher player count, but still, it is a difference if on turn three already, or on turn one, three knights are gone, on turn two, maybe six, uh, then uh, when. Uh, yeah, just just well with the knights you take things. out four so the the lower you go on the bar uh with the resources the more you take out of no when it's the same no I, I looked it up it's always the same amount of no, stuff you take out no you take less farmers than knights you take out more knights no it's it's it scales linearly. say what you yeah maybe it's because it's uh, there were more in the it's in the two, pool on two 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 because see you take three and with the farmer and the uh, sailor and stuff you take two 
from the whole pool. Yeah, but there's there's uh, more uh, knights and uh, scribes. Anyways, than right? The others. Okay. So yeah, uh, so it's the yeah, amount of guys uh, that you remove in total is always the same for the for uh, per player. Per player. Okay. So, got it. Got it. Um, so what what did you think about the game and tell me how did you like the manual because I can't talk about that I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah. For, deer first, in headlights. For, first, first and foremost, uh, I totally agree. Really, really strong system. I I'm not that sold on the theme of. I think this could have been again. It's a it's a Euro game. It's a worker placement game. So the could be very much some other theme in here. However, I really enjoy the mechanic. I like the bag building. I like worker placement games. Um, so that's a, a well a, a different approach to that, which is uh, refreshing than to let's say a game with like Caverna, where um, Caverna also feels limiting, but here it's it at least gives you the illusion of. Um, of a little bit of luck when drawing yeah. stuff out of the bag. I mean, ultimately, with the market, um, you will draw what you what you uh, well, purchased in terms of resources, since you just keep the guys in there and uh, keep keep on using them, and you can force almost your entire bag to be on on your board and, and keep it there until you get the guy that you need. Um, however, you actually, I'm at least maybe I'm more the guy who plays that way. Um, trying to have a higher rotation of do more actions and not wait out a turn mm. and not not use the guys. Um, there's some some little stuff I like. Uh, for example, these citizen tokens have a, a guy on, on one side and a girl on the other side. It's, uh, that is not usual. Same for these guys that they have a front and a back side uh, on here. So I like the attention to detail regardless of uh, thematic detail. Um, that's that's going on here. Quality of co components. I already said it. I I really like the, the haptic, the feeling of the chits and uh, the uh, the well, the prepared cardboard that's in here. I don't know what they did, but it's different than other games. Yeah, and it is at least different enough to be memorable. Um, the uh, the bags are nice. Um, so they're actually nice, nice and big. So if you really if you want to steal a bag for Dice Masters, Orleans got you covered. <laughs> There's a magneto inside of every Orleans. So the... Um, uh, <laughs> no, I had the, the same thought at one point. The, the, the manual, which... I, oh, it's here. Sorry. I, someone misplaced. No. Um, looks fairly... Uh, big but it isn't because this is German on this side English on the other side so it's only half the manual that is that is in here and if you don't you know, count the reference for materials and the, uh, the houses it's I think five or six pages it is very very nice nicely set up um, so you I said the phases. We had this page open while playing, and this just walks you right through the uh, the seven phases that happen uh, during a turn, from uh, flick over an event to well resolve the event at, at the end of the game. And uh, we occasionally just had to look up uh, some some of the houses that are all listed back here with special effects, um, how you use them, and, and done. Uh, the only thing that uh, we did not play according to manual, and uh, thankfully a friend of ours uh, gave us uh, a heads up on this, uh, there's a tile in here called Bathhouse that is supposedly really powerful, so we played the slightly toned down version. It's one. Of, it's a tile that allows you to essentially draw multiple chits from your bag and return, I, I think your official rules is you draw three and you return one, I think, is it? Yes, you draw three and uh, keep two, and you can decide which two to keep. And uh, obviously, people uh, seem to, uh, to consider that too powerful, even so that uh, even the designer said, eh, maybe that sounds about right. So uh, they gave out a couple of suggestions how you can do that. In fact, I think the Publisher FAQ has like five different versions of how to deal with that tile, which actually makes it interesting. Um, 
And now with the extra buildings, we can actually draft tiles and say we want to just have those in or those in, which is nice too. Um, in I'm I'm kind of surprised or was kind of surprised that this plays as quickly as mm. as it does, uh, which is a, certainly a plus. Um, these games, well, two hours can go by in in a blink of an eye, literally. Uh, so. Yeah, we. I think the two-player game we played was actually even faster than yeah, but an that's hour or just something. yeah, and that is for for one reason is because we um, well, it's just two players that plan, and on the other hand, we're pretty fast with those games. We don't think <laughs> overly all. long about those yeah. uh, options that we have with There's... our with our resources so it's a combination of both there's there's a there's a good potential for uh, analysis paralysis yeah. in, in this game yeah but i mean that's it's a it's, it's a euro it's manageable so. definitely so it, it we played maybe a hundred minutes with four players first game and um uh, ex while explaining with explaining rules and everything, so I think it was really really fast for that yeah. um, a complex and amount a big game that it is. So mm -hmm. shall we go into rating and then talk about the war stories as you said? Yeah. Or do you have anything to add that you liked or maybe not liked? Anything that oh. you forgot? Because I'm I'm go I, I'm good. I did mm -hmm. say all I wanted. No, this is a. It's. The, maybe maybe the only thing I can say that that is uh, that sounds negative is um, for some reason it, there's not a lot of really exciting stuff about this game. So I I really like this game. I think it's a it's a great game. I like that that system. And if someone asks me, hey, do you want to play Orleans? Then yeah, yeah sure. sure. Um, but for some reason I would not hear. Yeah, finally, I've been waiting weeks for playing this and. That's not that, but that is my personal kind of uh, opinion, subjective view on, on this. Uh, as I said, I, I, if someone wants to play this, I'm fine playing this. Um, and in when, well, I would bring this up in terms of, oh, we haven't played a Euro in some time, so do you want to go with this, this, or this? I wouldn't make a very strong push to one or the other, I guess. Okay. Well, it's, it's actually, it overturned Caverna for me. In, in regards to me asking you to play it, just because I don't like the two-player version of Caverna. The king is dead. Long live the king. No, it's, it's I re I, I'm, you, I'm really very good, happy about full, the two-player version for mm. this one. So that's why it overtook Caverna. Mm. But uh, other, th I, but I, I know where you're coming from, and I'm. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a solid game, and solid not being yeah. a bad word here, but it, it's. A solid, good game, but it's not the oh my gosh, exciting ah, yeah, yeah, game, yeah. Why, you know. Why we, why we were, uh, or after we had played this, uh, for some reason that that came up in comparison was lots of water deep. And I was yeah, like, man, I really like to play with lots of water deep again. <laughs> it's yeah, like kind of the, it, that sounds bad. For yeah, but it it gets you in the mood to play yeah. one of the heavier games. Well, and, this is certainly heavier than lots of water deep. It, so. Yeah, yeah. This Definitely. has way more gears. Yeah, because you can you can plan things that you can. Yeah, it, it's more stuff that you can you can do, and maybe well bounce back from not having as much victory points. It's it's a bit more tricky than with with water deep. So this so gets, let's rate. So this this gets uh, a wheat guy, a brocard wheel, and no cheese. <laughs> That sounds lovely. Well, for me, it's actually on my very personal scale of one to awesome. It's a solid 10. It's an awesome. And it did win the final point <gasps> again because I Spoilers. because I really, really like the uh, two player version, which huh. is awesome. Hmm. Otherwise, it's a solid game for four and I'm very sure it is for five as well. But I'm really, really amazed and very, very happy about the two player version. So let's uh, go into funny stories and experiences. And the first thing that I want to ask you... Before we do that... Would it be... We have an extended rating to do because this was the third and last one of the... Yeah, uh, yeah. And, oh, I wanted to say that now in the experiences. I just put in the thing and we put it into the experiences. 
Oh. So, w would this have won your very personal Spiel des Jahres? Or are you uh, compliant with the journalists that hmm. voted for Broom Service? I, I think I like playing Broom Service more than this, but that is really difficult to, to compare to each other. Yeah. I, I agree with some of the folks that Room Service could have easily won the regular Spiel des Jahres, uh, not necessarily the Kenner Spiel des Jahres. I would be perfectly fine with this winning the Kenner Spiel uh, and Room Service going for the regular one. That being said, I also, I, I think we talked about this when we talked about the regular Spiel des Jahres. I would have been perfectly fine with Machi Koro to win the uh, Spiel des Jahres, but for some reason Code Express won that. Um, which is, uh, I, they're all good games, but I'm, I think I said uh, I'm more leaning a little bit towards Machi Koro yeah. than, uh, than same, same. Uh, Code Express. But uh, yeah, no, uh, out of those three, I would pick Broom Service because I just enjoy the interaction with other players way too much. Than, uh, and this is very light here. It is even, well, it is, it's the same kind of light. Uh, kind of with Elysium, but more frustrating if someone's playing Poseidon cards. Uh, yeah, uh, there... Um, if I had to pick a two-player yeah. game, however, I think this would have won, because Broom Service is not really good with two players. Yeah, uh, and Elysium is okay, but not yeah. as great as this one. I think this is yeah. more balanced for two players, and that's why it would actually would have won my uh, Spiel des Jahres, and I would have said either Machi Koro or Broom Service for the usual Spiel des Jahres. I didn't really see Broom Service in the Kenner Spiel. Um, if you go back to the video where we talked about uh, Broom Service, you know exactly why uh, I feel that way. So um, it was Elysium for the longest time, but the two-player version of this one killed uh, my, my old favorite Elysium. Though it's still a very good game, just uh, not, that, not, not as exciting with two players than this one is. Yeah, Elysium is also, also a game better with three or four. Yes, it, exa and that's why this one would be my yeah. my personal game. So it's like the, the multi-tool of heavy euro. Three yeah. Four from two to, no, well now five, but usually two to four. But yeah. That and really up. being very, very balanced. And being short enough to be a family, even one evening game yeah. with 60 to 90 minutes yeah. without... Get your teenagers away from boring soaps and other shit on TV and play a lovely game with those. Oh, I was about to... Uh, I mean, it's it's those, great. Those stupid computer games. No, I'm very much pro computer <laughs> games, you know that. No, play, I'm more, very play much more computer games. Than don't, yeah. don't play board games. No, well, don't don't too. watch boring TV. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't uh, don't read the... because books are old and boring. No, you can do audio books. Rather, rather play <laughs> play French history. No, I mean, in audio. We we might have some weird opinion about what is good pastime. <laughs> so, actually, sorry for that. Best advice we can give you: don't listen to us. Yeah, at least not. Not, not, not religiously, no, because no. Uh, I'm not a monk. No. Although I have a monk. Yeah, ah. a yellow one. So uh, let's talk about uh, funny stories experiences. So what um, I already hinted at and what I really, really liked was um, the bicking and bitching, <laughs> bickering and bitching that goes on on the table when you play with more, two, more than two people. And you go around the map uh, trying to build your houses and get some goods. Um, the the goods are put on the board uh, randomly, so uh, it's not really clear from the setting up phase of the game what goes where. So it's it it can be that you just spread out evenly and nicely on the board with all the dudes and uh, collect goods and build houses, but more often than not, it's. <laughs> It's uh, that cloth is all in one section, and funny enough, it's uh, um, it, uh, the cloth with us leaned toward um, the actual real life uh, t 
textile industry area in France, which I find very funny. Uh, same was with wine. It was uh, along certain roads and uh, rivers where I know that there are very good vineyards. And I thought like, hmm, this is very funny. This is very accurate. It gets me into the mood to play this game. So of course you fight for uh, the higher value goods and it might be that you walk alongside your husband for the longest time. One time he builds a house, other time I build a house and we just fight for goods, which is very funny. We could have just spread and gone into uh, different directions, but no. Why should we? We don't want to. We See, want I, to I, fuck the other I one I just up. don't know these things where something is being manufactured in France, so I find those things weird and not funny because I... For me it's funny. I, I'm, Totally, I have no humor sense. See oh. what I gotta deal with? Man, always have some history and geography and business lessons while we play board games. Huh. Nerd. Mm -hmm. Proud to be one. Yeah, but I really, really like that. And then the, the, the one road that was the one. <laughs> no, not that bad. But I can tell you, like... <laughs> So Looking at that little <laughs> village, like, mm, I know a vineyard there, I was there, I tried some wine from that region, exactly around that village. And it was, and it was totally awesome. worth three victory points. It was awesome, and it, it's like, all around that village, only wine bottle chits got uh, put down on the board. It was, it's funny to me, because it's so much like real life, yeah, I got drunk there. It's like, yeah. Memories. <laughs> really liked it. Uh, another thing that I find really funny because um, you get the heavy sigh on the table um, is when you draw really, really badly from your bag and you are allowed to draw six, six uh, resources and you really manage to draw five farmers and one trader and you need it maybe a knight or uh, a professor or whatever it's like mm. that's, and, that's why I have and that to happened say, more than once why why bring all those farmers into the bag well they were there uh, because i had to clean my board i uh, wanted to do the actions i don't have them sitting there just looking nice i want to do the actions so they I go think, back into the bag the thing i like about this game is the very first technology thing you have to place must be placed on a farmer space because farmers are will be replaced by technology yeah. First, which like we saw today when we got home, uh, where the farmer was standing in the field uh, cutting wheat with and a uh, with a smartphone. It's like, yay, technology, why don't you control your uh, your vehicle with the iPad from home and a drone on top? That was the comment of my hubby. So, yeah, they get replaced by technology. But I had, like, in the whole game, I had five farmers and I was able to draw them all in one go. It's like, oh, it's actually a skill to do that. It, is. it cost me a whole turn. I couldn't getting, really getting, do anything. Getting five farmers in there is already a skill. It was, it's what, it, I think it was second to last uh, round or something, so yeah, you, quite you late in a, the game. I think I, you had a race uh, for the plus one coin you get at the beginning of each turn once you're ahead with uh, farmers. Right? Yeah, it could be. Could be. I don't, I don't remember, but it was very late in the game and I managed to draw all of my farmers in one go. It's like, what the heck? It's let's what's the, what's the chance to do that? Yeah, it's hundred percent if you're me. Could be and uh, yeah, lost lost a whole turn there. Hmm. It's like yeah, what the fuck? And then I couldn't place them all, so my market was uh, halfway filled and uh, I couldn't. Uh, draw the next turn. I couldn't draw all the resources I would have drawn because the market was half full and I couldn't fill up any more spaces. If so that, that was doesn't, bad. If that doesn't sound like a bureau game to you, yeah, I don't know what does. <laughs> yeah, but I've, all in all, I really, really liked uh, playing that game. It's it's more of a quiet game. Yeah, certainly because everybody's looking at their board. And yeah, I mean, with with four people, it was way more bitching 
about yeah, yeah. people's choices and for actions, but just the two of us, well, we could have listened to a podcast. And maybe maybe that's something we experience would experience if we played have played this way more often. But um, you sometimes look at what other players are doing, where they're going. I mean, the direct messing isn't really happening, but. Um, for example, if you see that someone is really making a go for all the scholars to go really far on the development track, you might push for those before they run out. A, that's one thing, or B, just to prevent someone from going yeah, too far um, on, on, on that track. Um, but that is really brain burnery because yeah. you will be at the beginning it's all easy because you can only do two or three actions but once you have all that stuff in there it's like okay i could go this or i could do that and then you look over to what the other guy is doing and then okay but if i do this then i can move those two over there then that doesn't work ultimately um there's a turn order but the luckily and that goes into the it's a silent game that uh planning phase uh, happens at the same time meaning everybody's looking at their board and being very quiet uh, so it's a it's a game like dominion or pretty much uh, every euro game where you have to look a lot at the board and uh, yeah go forward with it yeah. so if you want to do something to speed it up you could time the planning phase the rest is pretty straightforward and fast yeah actually. but um it, I think it felt longer than it actually was. It was maybe a minute or one and a half that the planning phase for all four players took. Um, but it felt way longer because it's really quiet in that time because everybody's concentrating. And this is one of the games that you probably won't play more than one round a night because it's, well, it's kind of exhausting, not yeah. as other games. There's... We, we do have games and we talked about them that are way more exhausting but uh, it's it, like you said it's brain burnery and uh, after one game though you really want to have a second game and just get the score even maybe um, it's, yeah it's like not happening that that night maybe the night after yeah. so yeah that's that's pretty much the the whole experience but I really I really enjoyed playing so the game. So we'll say goodbye. Like and yeah. subscribe. Do the outro now. He made 50% of the outro. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section. We would be very happy to read some nice words. Um, if you feel like liking or sharing this video, go ahead. We'd love that too. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we got a Gamers Cut for you every Sunday and lots of art videos throughout the week. The same couch, in fact. Huh? What did I say? A new Gamers Cut. Well, it's the same couch. It's a new game. But yeah, please go continue. <sighs> he had to. See, that's, so, that's that's the sigh, the sigh of Orléans. I cannot draw the stupid no, thing. No, that's at... the light side. It wasn't the heavy side. It wasn't the God damn it, Sai. What was that? So, uh, have fun. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. And uh, take good care. Bye. Goodbye.